Hello, hello, hello. We are back with Chapter 8, Geometric Figures, uh, investigating Lesson 4, Angles and Polygons. Now, poly, that means many. So it's, it's a many-sided figure. So we're going to look at figures today that have many sides. Um, one of the cool things about it is if we look at this triangle here, and each one of these uh, angles, angle A, angle B, and angle C, all have a particular measure, 50, 130. But there's this cool rule when it comes to um, angle measures in triangles, and that is that they all add up to 180 degrees. So if we take the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C, all of these things equal 180. And you can look here. The measure of angle A is 50. So we substitute that in for the measure of angle A. The measure of angle B is 100, so we substitute that in. And then we look at the measure of angle C, which is 30. We substitute that in. And if you go uh, 50 plus 30 is 80, 80 plus 100 is 180 degrees. And that is true for every single triangle. Every triangle there is, if you add up, the angle measures may be different, but they're always going to equal 180 degrees. So we're going to look at this problem right here. Find the measure of angle N in triangle LMN. Well, it's a triangle. We need to find this angle measure. The one thing we know is that all of the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if we can say the measure of angle L plus the measure of angle M plus the measure of angle N equals 180 degrees. And so far, we know that the measure of angle L is 74. So we can substitute um, 74 in here for the measure of angle L. And then we know the measure of angle M is actually equal to 57 degrees. So we can substitute 57 in for the measure of angle M. And lastly, we don't know the measure of angle N. So that's going to be the thing that we're going to try to use our algebra skills and uh, solve. So we're going to try to isolate in and get it by itself so we can figure out what this angle measure is. This is what we're looking for. To do that, we have two sides of the equation, the left side and the right side. We want to get measure of angle in by itself, but we have these two numbers right here. Since they're like terms, we can combine them, and that's what we're going to do. So we're just going to add 74 plus 57 over here on the side. 4 plus 7 is 11. Write the 1. Carry the 1. 5 plus 7 is 12. Plus 1 is 13. So this ends up being 131 plus the measure of angle in equals 180. Well, now that we've combined like terms, we can get try to get M in by itself. To do that, we have to use our inverse operations. How is 131 related to the measure of angle N? Well, it's related through addition, so we're going to do the inverse operation of addition, which would be subtraction. We're going to subtract 131 to both sides. That's going to become 0, and now we have the measure of angle N by itself right here. And so now we just need to do this uh, subtraction here. I need to borrow, making that a 7, and this is a 10. 10 take away 1 is 9. 7 take away 3 is 4. And there we have it. The measure of angle N is 49 degrees. So this ends up being 49 degrees. All right? Perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and find the unknown angles for um, problems 2, 3, and 4. We're going to use the same process. Okay, so we know that since it's a triangle, that all of the angles in a triangle um, add up to 180 degrees. So we're just going to go ahead and write our equation. The measure of angle uh, D plus the measure of angle F plus the
the measure of angle E, all of those angles equal 180 degrees. Now we're just going to substitute in the values. So we know that the measure of angle D is 47, so we're going to put 47 in for the measure of angle D, plus the measure of angle F is 30 degrees, so I substitute that in, plus the measure of angle E is the thing we don't know and we're trying to figure that out. So again, I'm just going to combine like terms over here to get measure of angle E by itself. But first I have to simplify this. 7 plus 0 is 7. 4 plus 3 is 7. So this ends up being 77 plus the measure of angle E equals 180 degrees. Now I'm going to use my algebra skills to isolate the measure of angle E and get it by itself. I know that this is related through addition, so I'm going to do the inverse operation, which would be subtracting 77 to both sides of the equation. Those cancel out and become zero. I have now got the measure of angle E by itself. So um, now I'm just going to do the subtraction. Uh, this I'm going to borrow, make that a 7, this a 10. 10 take away 7 is 3. 7 take away 7 is 0. And we drop down the 1. So this ends up the measure of angle... E ends up being 103 degrees. So this would be 103 degrees. And they all add up to 180. Now it is your turn, ladies and gentlemen, to check it out. I want you to go ahead and pause your device, work on problems three and four, make sure you do it exactly how I did it. Write your equation with symbols, substitute, show all your algebra, all that fun stuff. So go ahead and pause, work on three and four. When you get done, press play and we'll talk about your results. All right, see you in a bit. All right, we are back. Let's go ahead and see how you did on problem three. So the first thing I know is this is a triangle, so that means all of the angle measures add up to 180 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and write my equation. The measure of angle X plus the measure of angle Z plus the measure of angle Y equal 180 degrees. Now I'm going to substitute in the values. 55 degrees is what measure of angle X is, so I'm gonna write 55 plus the measure of angle Z is 57, plus a uh, measure of angle Y is what I'm trying to figure out. I don't know that value. Now I just need to simplify and combine like terms here before I can isolate um, the measure of angle Y. So I'm gonna do that right here, 55 plus 57. Five plus seven is 12, write the two, carry the one. Five plus five is 10, plus one is 11. So that ends up being 112 plus the measure of angle Y equals 180 degrees. Now, since I've combined like terms on this side, I can use my algebra skills to get measure of angle Y by itself. I need to know how 112 is related to Y. It's related through addition, so I'm gonna do the inverse operation of addition, which would be to subtract 112 to both sides. This ends up being zero. I'm left with the measure of angle Y equals I'm going to have to borrow from this, making that a 7 and this a 10. 10 take away 2 is 8. 7 take away 1 is 6. And 1 take 1 is 0. So there it is, 68 degrees. That is what the measure of angle Y is, 68 degrees. And all of those add up to 180 degrees. All right, if you got that one right, wonderful, great job. Let's go ahead and try problem 4. So problem 4, it's a triangle, so we know that all of the angles add up to 180 degrees. So I'm just gonna write my equation first. The measure of angle L plus the measure of angle J plus the measure of angle K equals 180 degrees. I'm gonna substitute in my values. Measure of angle L equals 45 degrees plus the measure of angle J equals 53 degrees plus the measure of angle K equals uh, we don't know that one. We're trying to figure that one out, measure of angle K. Now I just need to um, combine like terms on this side of the equation. So I'm going to go 45 plus 53. 5 plus 3 is 8. 4 plus 5 is 9. 98, those two equal 98, plus the measure of angle K is equal to 180 degrees. Now that I've combined like terms, it is now time to isolate the measure of angle K and get it by itself. To get it by itself, I have to get rid of this 98. 98 is, 
is related to um, the measure of angle K through the operation of addition. So I need to do the inverse operation of addition, which would be subtraction. So that's going to cancel out and become zero. I now have the measure of angle K by itself, which is what I need. I'm going to subtract. I'm going to have to borrow from this 8, making that a 7 and then that a 10. 10 take away 8 is 2. And then uh, this is going to have to be 17 take away 9 is 8. So there you have it. The measure of angle K is 82 degrees. And they all add up to 180. All right, if you got both of those right, great job. Let's go on to the next page. Um, so what we have is we, we have some figures over here. And um, we are just going to go ahead and fill in this table. Um, so when we look at a quadrilateral, a quadrilateral is a four-sided figure, okay? So right here we have a one, two, three, four-sided uh, four figure. So what we're going to do with this four-sided figure is we're going to see how many triangles. Here's our four-sided figure right here. We're going to see how many triangles can we make in this four-sided figure. Well, there's one here and there's another one here. So that means the number of triangles would be two. Okay? Two triangles. Um, let's look at a pentagon. Over here is a pentagon. This pentagon is a five-sided figure. One, two, three, four, five. And if you look in the pentagon, we can make one triangle here, another triangle here, and a third triangle here. So that would be um, three triangles. And then there's a hexagon. A hexagon is a, um, a six-sided figure. One, two, three, four, five, six. And how many triangles are in a hexagon? Well, there's one, two, three, four. Four triangles in a hexagon. Now, do you guys notice a pattern? A quadrilateral, there's four sides. That means there's two triangles. A pentagon has five sides, and there's three triangles. A hexagon has six sides, and there's four triangles. If I kept going and I said, hey, the next one is a heptagon, which is a seven-sided figure, can you figure out how many triangles there are just by the pattern? Yes, there would be five triangles because <clears throat> the number of triangles is always two less from the number of sides. If you see that, four minus two is two. Five minus two is three. Six minus two is four. Seven minus two is five. If I went up one more to an octagon, octagon, that would be an eight-sided figure. It would be eight minus two, which would be six. There would be six triangles. So on number eight, it says the number of triangles is always two less than the number of sides of the figure. Now this is really, really important when we're trying to find the sum of the interior angles. Okay, the sum of the interior angles means that if you take all these angles, this angle, this angle, this angle, and this angle, and you add them all up, what do you get? Well, we know if we have a triangle, A triangle, the sum of all the, tri uh, the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So if we take these bigger uh, uh, figures, like a quadrilateral, and we divide them into um, triangles, we know that the sum of these interior angles, an interior angles are the angles inside the figure. So we know all of these interior uh, angles for this triangle have to equal 180 degrees. And all of these interior angles of this triangle have to equal 180 degrees, which means the sum of the interior angles of this quadrilateral have to be 180 plus 180, which would equal 0 plus 0, 8 plus 8 is 16, write the 6, carry the 1 it would equal 360 degrees. So the sum of the interior angles here equals 360 degrees. Now you could go 180 plus 180, or you would find the same thing by going 180 times two, okay? 
So that would be the same over here with this pentagon. There's, a, there's one triangle. If we wanted to find the sum of the interior angles, this one triangle, all of those angles add up to 180. Uh, all, we have another triangle. All of these angles add up to 180. And all of these angles add up to 180. So if we wanted to find the sum of all interior angles, we would just go 180 times 3. And that would be 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 4 is 24. Write the 4, carry the 2. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 would be 5. So that means that the sum of all the interior angles of the pentagon would be 540 degrees. The same is true with this um, hexagon. There are 1, 2, 3, 4 triangles. And each one of these triangles, the sum of the interior measures of a triangle is 180. So we would have 180, 180, 180, and 180. So it would be 180 times 1, 2, 3, 4. 180 times 4, which would be 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 8 is 32. Write the 2, carry the 3. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7. So the sum of the interior angles for this hexagon would end up being 720 degrees. All right, so let's go down here because we're going to use that concept to find the sum of the interior angles. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this figure and we're going to draw the triangles that are... Um, see how many triangles we can make inside of this figure. So what I see is if I take this and I connect here, I end up with two triangles. Now I know the sum of, of the, all of the angles of this triangle is going to be 180, and I know the sum of all of the angles of this triangle are going to be 180. So to find the sum of the entire figure, it's going to be 180 times 2. And if I go 180 times 2, I'm going to end up with 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 8 is 16, write the 6, carry the 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. So I'm going to end up with 360 degrees. That means that all of the, the, the angles, when you take all of these angles and you add this angle measure to this angle measure, and you add it to this angle measure and this angle measure, this plus this plus this plus this equals 360 degrees. Perfect. Now we're going to do the same thing for 10. We're going to find the sum of the interior angles. All of these angles, we're going to determine what if you take this angle and you add it to this angle and you add it to this angle and you add it to this angle and this angle and this angle, what do all of those angles add up to be? What is their sum? I guess I could have done that a little better. Okay. So to do that, we're going to divide this figure into triangles. So the first triangle I see is right here. I could divide this right here. Okay, that's a triangle. Um, I could also connect right here. That would be another triangle. And then I see I could have one more triangle right here. So that means this would be... 180, this would be 180, this would be 180 degrees, and that would be 180 degrees. So I can go 180 times 1, 2, 3, 4. 180 times 4, which is going to be 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 8 is 32, write the 2, carry the 3. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 would be 7. So all of these angles would end up adding up to a, a 720 degrees. All right, let's go ahead, and I want you to try the last one. Okay, so go ahead, pause, determine all the, ang uh, the triangles that fit into this figure, draw them all in, and then um, figure out what the sum of the interior angles are. Okay, press pause, we'll, and when you get done, press play, and we'll see you in a bit. Okay, we're back. We are ready to determine what the sum, what all of these angles right here add up to be. What are the sum of the interior angles, the angles inside the figure? So to do that, we're going to draw the triangles. So I see there's a triangle here, and I can also draw a triangle here. So that means all of these angles equal, interior angles equal 180, all of these angles equal 180, 
and all of these angles equal 180. So that would be 180 times 1, 2, 3. And 180 times 3, 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 8 is 24, write the 4, carry the 2. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. So all the interior angles end up being 540 degrees. So if you got that one right, wonderful job, and we will see you next time.